So we just got to the campground. We're gonna give you guys a walk around of our cargo trailer conversion. This is exactly how it looks like when we load it out for a trip. This is a you know weekend, two day trip at a state park. So it's nothing fancy or, or complicated. But this is basically, it is a custom built cargo trailer and we got it made with the windows and the door and stuff already in it. And it just came as a pretty much a plywood box and then we customized the inside. So we're gonna take you around, kind of show you all the little details, what we did to it and try to make this, you know, kind of a quick and easy walk around and let you know and you can see what you think. All right, so we're gonna hop inside first. Right up front, we have a futon with a futon because it can be a couch and it also folds down you fold the thing out and it becomes a bed so we dual did, purpose however replace it with this three inch memory foam mattress instead of the regular futon mattress yeah this is basically just a, a big lots frame that comes with a really crappy mattress that we replaced with an amazon one mm -hmm. so then let me pull this out Oops. right here up front so that is a cell phone booster that's a sure cell brand not a we boost so it's different from the one we have in a truck, but it works really good. And so then that is, it's called a uh, Mighty Mini. I think it's a power, whole power distribution box. So we have it wired in. And then inside we have a battery. I think it's a, on the bottom there, it's a hundred amp hour. Yes. And then a 200 watt inverter. So that's how we get all the power. And we have a little uh, battery meter down here too to fill us. So we know when it starts to die and stuff like that. Yeah. So then backing up. Oh look, it zooms out. Yes. Backing up, we have cabinet, cabinet. And so we haven't figured out a good way to keep these things closed. They keep coming open on us, so we use these little... Uh, I really like these, actually. They work really well, and they're, they're, it's really fast. And then when you're not using them, you just put them over here. Out. Hold on. <laughs> you just like them over here out of the way. Yeah. And we just kind of... This is uh, our child's uh, sleeping gear when she comes with us. Yeah. It's just a heated blanket and a sleeping pad and a pillow. Memory foam pillow up top. Yeah, it's the one that I'm still looking for a new pillow for. Yeah, and then we have these crappy lights yes. rigged up on a switch. There's a light up there. I see like this switch is wired there and above me. And then there's a switch in the very back corner that controls the other two. That's how it came. Don't really like the wire job. I don't have to show them what's in there, but okay. it's just more stuff. Yeah, it's just more like a sleeping gear. And then we have another cabinet up there. So we put all these cabinets in, we painted it. Uh, this just came as a wood box, you know, like a standard cargo trailer. Do the floor to it. This is just a uh, vinyl, like linoleum, I think it is. Yeah. Just roll it out and it all paste it down. Yeah, so then we have a normal, uh, mini fridge so it's not the propane one or anything fancy like that because we, we don't need it so with the inverter and the battery i have this wired up you know using a, um, a different color outlet so i know this one runs to the inverter and i know this one runs to the shore power so this inverter and the battery will run this fridge for about three days or so straight without charging and so then we can only run the microwave when we're on shore power because we don't want to zap the battery. But using a regular fridge, we no, don't normally go in a trailer with more than three days without power. So, I mean, this, this works for us and it was cheaper than a propane one. And we have the old toilet down there. That's that Dometic, you know, flushable kind of toilet. You know, it's nothing fancy either. Um, then kind of used for like our bedtime, like night, night stand or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Oh, hit the, uh, over there. We have a little remote control for our rope lights. So, so if you guys want to have a party, we can do that too. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, it's not going to work this time. <laughs> te technical difficulties and see, we're not plugged in yet. You got to put it in the inverter. Watch Ta this. Ta-da. And so now we have rope lights to go throughout, which are actually better than our other lights. But see, it can do all kinds of, you can change it you know, to yellows and ambers and reds and stuff. So if you don't want to check bugs, but you want to leave the stuff open, you can have it different colors. We use white so we can see better. So then, this is the main reason we got the camper in the first place, or the trailer, because we couldn't find a toy hauler that did everything we wanted. Without a bunch of wasted space. Yeah, lots of wasted space. It had to be like 5,000 feet long. It had to have everything and it. it had to cost about half a million dollars. So we just got this, converted it, and put our crap in here. So we use little lock and loads, and this is a lock and roll system. So we can load the thing up in no time. We can, we measured this all right. So we have the little cabinet over here, stand up armoire, I think is a fancy name for it. This will fold out, it'll go right to there. And so then our whole area is about. 10 or so feet 
of the trailer and the rest of it is all, just all cargo area. So over there, that thing pops up. This thing pops up. There's a table there that pops up so we can sit in here, we can eat, we can cook, we can do whatever we want. But basically, we use it as a trailer to haul stuff. So obviously there's no shower in here. There's no sink in here. There's no running water in here. Basically, we use what's provided at the place we're at. So we go almost every weekend, we go somewhere, whether it's a state park, whether it's conservation areas, whether it's, you know, wherever. And there's always some kind of running water. There's a shower, there's a toilet, there's something. So we didn't spend all the extra space, time, money, all that effort trying to put plumbing and toilets and showers and stuff in here because it just wasn't worth it. Because like right now we found a spot right next to a vaulted toilet. So we don't really even need to use our toilet. We can just walk right over there. To us, it's not a big deal. And plus we had a camper before. Uh, it was about a 32 footer or so that had all that stuff in there. And like most of the time you don't really want to use the stuff anyway because you don't want to have to drain the tanks because it takes so long as pain and stuff like that. So you just use, like especially at the shower, if you're not hooked up to water, you take you know two or three showers and you might run your whole tank depending on how big your tank is. So it's just not worth it to us. We just use what's here and it works out a whole lot better. So if you're considering making one of these, keep that in mind. How much do you take a shower? Can you use a shower? Like where do you go? Stuff like that. Even if we're off grid, like we can always go to a truck stop and take a shower. We can go like wherever. There's there's always somewhere to go. It's just, it's just not worth it. Then you have to worry about draining the tanks and where it drains to and plumbing and holding tanks. And it's just a nightmare. But anyway, I keep going on. I can go on about that forever. Um, I think we are going to, this is pretty much all the goodies about it. I think we're going to back everything up, pop everything out and see if there's any more details we missed. We'll have it all set up and we can come back and, and you can check it out there. Uh, real quick though, just back there, you can see there's a whole bunch of like stuff all taped up and like draped off and stuff. That's just the netting. So we actually put the thing, the thing down and leave it down and use the netting. And then it has like a, a more not screen door, like a cover that goes over it. So you can do either one. We usually just use the screen part. Yeah, let's do a walk around outside real fast. That's key. Yeah, so here we go. We're gonna go out the door. So we leave this on there. So this is kind of a bad idea. So we made the the door have a window. So it's nice to have in case we need to see out of it. Obviously, if there's something going on out there, we can. But we leave that thing up because that thing just shines right down in our faces. Yeah, so we also got the little blinds like this that pull down. That one we broke off, so we have to use a... a a uh, pillowcase or something right now whoopsie um so that's how we keep the light out here we have we can put a fantastic fan up in here which we've had before those are pretty awesome but right now it's a little padding and it's got an air conditioner with a thermostat so when we bought the the trailer it came with a uh, air conditioner built into it they already installed it pre-installed it because we asked them to it came with a really crappy vent system and no thermostat so we had to take that off ourselves and then we wired it up through there hid the wire ran it back through here. And then um, once you open this up, all the wiring is back in there. But yeah, so 60, and this six thing degrees. Works. Like before know. it just had like control knobs on it. So it was like chill chasers and like you never really knew what you were putting it on, if it was like cold or, and if it was already set from the last trip and you don't remember where it was set at, you had to like turn it a bunch of times until you figured out where it was. So it was just a pain. This is obviously easier. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have heat. So it had, like she said, a chill chaser little element in there that was up in the unit that we took out when we converted it to that. So like right now with it 66, we can use heavier bags. I think we're gonna have power at this site, shore power. So we're gonna run a, uh, just an electric heater. We could run a Mr. Buddy heater. Uh, I think we're going to rig up somewhere in the corner down there to where we punch a hole in the side where we can run a diesel heater. Um, some people mount the heaters and stuff inside, but since we use a diesel heater for other things like the truck and the forerunner and stuff, we're going to put a hole in there so it just vents inside because we put our our diesel heater in a rigid toolbox. Yep. So just another idea. All right, so let's uh, walk around outside. Okay. So see, this one, this one's got the RV door also. So see, you just... And it shuts right up real easy. And then there's a door catch right there. We had them install that. So I installed this myself. It's just a Harbor Freight toolbox. Open this. We've used about three of these now on like three different trailers. Yeah, it's just got a uh, wheel chocks in it and pretty much all of our, you know, cables, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. This has and a, a level. Yeah, a level. Right. We like to be level. <laughs> we went, <laughs> we went and got a uh, electric tongue jack. We had that installed too. That thing is freaking. You know, you don't have to hand crank it. You just punch it, punch it, uh, punch the 
the thing and it goes up and down is wired straight to the battery inside or it's wired to the vehicle so you don't have to worry about it failing if it does you can take this off and crank it and you're good so i'm gonna back you up here so it is a v-nose but you see the only thing we have in that v up front at all is that cabinet then we use the box for the rest of it so then there's a window we made sure it was tall enough inside and stuff like that so we we actually got to pick the height and all that stuff when they made it um this is just a little mount for a, like a little cheapo led light so if we need just a little bit of light out here we just toss it up it just like it clicks into place yeah like a battery powered thing he's not a fan of it but i like to have it so so this is where the shore power goes and this is for my cell phone booster antenna so i wired all the electric in here myself except for the air conditioner they pre-wired it through the ceiling and then i did the rest of it but it all runs down in the bottom in the it's called armor conduit wiring i can't remember the name of it shielded conduit it's that metal crap it might rust out eventually probably probably have to be replaced but it'll do for now so then we got those three things there they come out and you can drop the, the deck uh the door down and it becomes like a little deck yeah, we've used they that just, they just like swing out you like pull them out of place and they just swing yep pull the down same thing we use is a stabilizer on the trailer yep so then on this side it's just a standard trailer that's it it's got the window there and that's basically it so we're going to set it up and pull the bikes out and let you know or let you see how it looks and go from there so ours obviously is newer we had this thing built brand new but this isn't our first time. We actually did one prior to this. We bought an old trailer. It was a 16 foot box for about 800 bucks. So we completely gutted the whole thing. And we did everything ourselves. Like the floor, we ripped out the whole floor, put in a whole new floor. Uh, and then we had to put up all the walls and then we put up the, the uh, wood paneling stuff on the walls. Well, we also insulated it. We used yeah. the R board, the inch thick R board that we insulated the old one. This one, we had it made insulated so we didn't have to take the walls down. We even did the sheet metal on the outside. Yep. That was rough. On the so, old one. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why this time we got someone else to do all that stuff. Yeah, so it's totally possible to do it. Also on the old one, we used a mini split air conditioner. We mounted on the tongue. Mm -hmm. We use a mini split as an air conditioner. We used that trailer for probably a season and a half and then decided we didn't want to, or then we decided we got the camper. So we got a big old 30 foot brand new travel trailer and used that. And then the reason why we like this also is there's only so much stuff that can fit in it. When we had the big one, we had like a whole new kitchen set up. We had a whole shower stuff. We had extra clothes, yeah, we had I extra have, bedding. We had all kinds of stuff. I still have boxes full of stuff that I pulled from that that we haven't even touched because we don't use it when we can't. Yeah, you just don't imagine how much crap you get. And then it takes, you know, 45 minutes to set it up. Then you have to either find a garage to keep it on this big enough or somewhere to store the big old trailer at. So this one's dual purpose. That's how it's got beat up. We actually can move crap in it. We actually had to take couches out of it to, to take it on this trip. So you can use it for more things. So yeah, it's kind of like a mobile storage unit too, because we can keep the bikes in here pretty much all the time. Yeah. So they freeze up room in the garage, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, so doing one of these over a tra travel trailer to us made perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, but basically what I was getting at is you don't have to have a one built and something fancy and all this stuff. You can start with an older one, a smaller one, all that stuff. So I just encourage anybody to just get out there and get one. You know, it can even be a single axle. You can pull with something smaller that all you have is sleeping quarters. We use ours as a, a toy hauler because you know, we can add distance to our trips. So we just load the bikes in here, go camp somewhere like we are right now in the state park. And then we can, you know, we drove a little over an hour to get here. So it's not really that far, but then that's an hour that we didn't have to ride motorcycles that we can go even farther. So that's kind of the plan with us. Um, especially with the moto uh, motorcycle trips but since we have other we have the truck that we camp right out of the back of the truck we have a forerunner with a rooftop tent on it we camp out of that so this isn't our primary you know camping thing it's so, mostly so you know we don't we don't get tired from riding the bikes to where we want to go we get there and we can ride wherever we want in that area and ride for as long as we want and then all we have to do is come back and load them up and yeah. get to sleep on a bed so well and also since we camp all the other ways we've learned that a shower in the unit isn't important. A sink in the unit isn't important. You know, running water and stuff like that. Toilets, a toilet is nice to have, but it, most of the time we don't even use it. Like I said before, we use kind of what's provided. So when you're making one of these conversions, you should really just decide what's really important to you. To some people, they have to have a shower every time before they go to sleep. They have to have a shower first thing they wake up. Then maybe something like that's worth it to you. But still, you're gonna go get your shower right outside. Here, right uh, today in the state park, um, the it's shower, off season. Yeah, it's off season, so the shower house is closed. 
but there's a truck stop right down the street or our house is an hour away we're staying one night so um, I guess it really depends on how far off grid you're going and all that stuff but then like I said before you have to worry about dump tanks stuff like that so it's the big trade-off I mean and then you have to worry about weight and then what you're gonna pull it with and all that stuff we use an f-250 because we already had one we use it for the big trailer stuff like that but once you get the single axles you start adding water you start adding weight all that stuff I mean it, it just gets out of hand really fast so we just you know try to keep it as simple as we can mm -hmm. uh, I think that's basically it you think of anything else people always ask us Oh, people always ask us all the time what that pole is out. It is the cell phone booster pole. So we put it on a painter pole, or it's one of those things that you use to change light bulbs on like 50 foot ceilings. So we just put the pole on the end and we lean it on there. So we just set our phone right next to the antenna. Works great. That one's a sure sell brand. The uh, WeBoost worked better. This one's getting kind of old, but does the trick. We get cell phone service pretty much everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. um, the net, like right now, this is a perfect season. We have the back is still open right now. We don't have the net down and it's 65 degrees in here and we're just chilling. Oh, we didn't pop that table up. Go ahead and do that one real quick. Yeah, so that just, yeah, and then it's just got a little thing right there. Yeah, that's it. It kind of so, did some damage to it one time. Yeah, so I actually want to replace this one with another one like this, but lower because it folds flat. That one gets caught on the Yeah, thing. this one's just really, it's really nice and sturdy. I'll get back here. Yeah, we keep all our riding gear and stuff over here, boots on the floor, all our straps over there. That stuff sits on the fender. That one sits on the fender. So we do have this. Now. Yeah, we do have this crap on the floor, but we always wear some kind of, you know, flip flops or house shoes or something anyway. Crocs. 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 So don't really worry about it. Same with the, the D rings on the floor. But yeah, so then we just strap this in using a cinch strap that goes across both, and we just unsnap that. Then this, we just have a little piece of Velcro to keep the door from opening and that's it so that's basically all the setup there is he always gets the bikes out because i'm still new so. she doesn't want to fall down yeah i don't when i'm in front of people that's a whole trailer that's pretty much why we did it what we did and we don't really have any plans for any upgrades because this is basically all there is other than uh, changing the table out and we also need to get another uh, curtain because those curtains are awesome yeah so this is really all we need. We've used it for this one for over a year. So, mm -hmm. but if anyone has any suggestions on better ways to close the cabinet, let us know. Oh, yeah, we definitely need because he doesn't I like it. I don't mind it, but he doesn't. Like I don't it. like them. They never fall off, though. They work really good. You just squeeze them and they're on. You gotta have really good grip strength, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, um, follow us on all our other stuff. Uh, check out our other videos and hope you follow along. And we'll catch you next time. Yep, see you later. Now we go ride motorcycles. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom.